Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Kalika and you're going to be a craftier person after watching this video. High school forces new policy with insanely disproportionate punishments. This is my first post to the subreddit, I'm on mobile. So my senior year of high school, the administration decided that they were going to implement a new policy where every student had to wear their student ID around their necks on a lanyard at all times. About a week before school started, they sent a letter home explaining the policy, the consequences of not adhering to it, as well as a boring cheap lanyard so there was no excuse not to have one. They also tried to make it fun by encouraging students who had the means to buy our own personal lanyards to match our style or something like that. The consequences for not having your idea around your neck was either not being let on campus until you got it or being sent home to get it, which is unrealistic for a lot of people and results in missed school, and could get as bad as a short suspension if there were multiple infractions. After a few weeks of dealing with the cheap lanyards that broke easily and put us at risk of losing our IDs, my friends and I decided to go to the mall and get personalised lanyards. We went to a bunch of stores so my friends could get various sports or pop culture themed lanyards. Finally, I asked if we could stop by the store we all know and love, with the fun inviting front half and the wild sexy back half, to see what they had to offer. As we were looking, my friend who had already gotten himself a lanyard spotted one perfect for me. It was navy blue and at first glance appeared to have white stripes or squiggles on it. Upon closer inspection, it reads, Go F yourself in tiny lettering all over the lanyard. They said it could fit our style, right? I wore that lanyard around my neck every single class, every single day for the rest of the year, even after my school realised that the rule was kind of dumb and the punishments were crazy. And when my college started implementing a similar policy with worse consequences my junior year, I bought out my favourite lanyard. And here's a picture of it. Stand right there. So this happened a few years ago when I was working a low pay retail job. The job itself sucked, but the people were great, which is why most of us hadn't left instantly on arrival. The people were great, except for one. We shall call her Lucifer, because her name is similar and it's an apt description. No one liked Lucifer. She had issues with almost every member of staff, but as she was a member of management and friends with those above her, she got away with almost everything. On the fateful day in question, it was pretty quiet. A few customers had been in for a look, but not much more. Only a few people in the store had specific jobs that would require their full attention, but past that, it was a do what needed to be done style. So as it was quiet, I started doing basic cleaning jobs and restocking the shelves, as we were meant to do. This was not good enough for Lucifer. What do you think you're doing? Restocking the shelves? And if a customer came in right now and didn't see anyone in the tills, do you think that would look good? I'd like to point out that we never had someone assigned to the tills, as long as there's someone near them so they can serve customers when it's necessary, that's fine. And there were people near the tills in this situation. Would you like me to go behind the counter then? Ah, uh, good, you're starting to catch on. I don't take well to being spoken to like that, but a job's a job and I pushed my anger down and went to stand by the tills. After 5-10 to ten minutes of standing doing nothing, generally there are only 5-6 to six people working, so having someone standing doing nothing really affects the work efficiency. I started doing other small jobs, making sure not to stray more than 10 steps from the till. At one point, another member of management notices I've not got a great deal to do and asks me to start cleaning some of the stock. I oblige, again making sure I don't go too far away from the tills in case a customer walks in. This is not good enough for Lucifer. She storms out of the manager's room, looks at me and stomps her way over. She then looked me dead in the eye, poked me in the chest and shouted, You. Tills. Now. The other member of management tried to defend me but she just cut him off and followed me to the tills. On arrival, she again poked me in the chest and said to me, You stand right here. Do not move. Do not do anything else. No matter what people tell you, you will stand right here. Do you understand simple instructions? I was livid. White knuckling on the desk I was holding, livid. But I nodded and she walked away. After a few minutes of complete silent rage, it struck me. If she wanted me to stand right here and do nothing, stand right here and do nothing is what I shall do. Customers came up and were served by other people because I couldn't do anything but stand there, right? The other member of management asked me why I wasn't serving customers, and I told him that Lucifer had told me to stand right here and do nothing else, so that's what I'm doing. He gave me a weird look, then smiled and said, on your head be it. It didn't take long for Lucifer to notice I wasn't doing anything, and dragged me into the manager's office to start shouting at me, asking me why I wasn't doing my job. To which I replied, I didn't want to misunderstand your instructing, and wanted to follow them to the letter. That didn't go down very well, and after being called every name under the sun, I received a disciplinary. One of the reasons listed was not following management instructions, which I thought was a bit silly. I followed the instructions to the letter, and got sent back to work. Lucifer transferred stores after a few months, and those who I still keep in contact with still laugh about that day. A few months ago, Lucifer apparently got reported to HR for bullying and has suffered a serious demotion, so karma may take its time, but it will always get you. Show all your work. 
Lots to love, free to play. On cellular telephone, English is my native language, so if there's any mistakes, I apologize for nothing. TLDR at bottom. I had a math class in high school. Shocker, right? And the teacher was a middle-aged lady who was rather strict about showing your work. I was not a big believer in showing my work because math was pretty easy for me and I did a lot of steps in my head. Didn't want to waste time writing it out. And so for a good chunk of the year, all my homework and tests had points taken off for not showing enough work, even though I always got the right answer. I started showing more work as the year went on, but it was never enough in her eyes, I always lost some points. Eventually I got fed up with this and had a discussion slash argument with her, and she insisted that I had to show more of my work. All of it? Yes, all of it. Well, call me Jeannie, cause your wish is my command. A little while after that we had another test, and I came prepared. Since she expected students to show lots of work, we were allowed to bring in blank paper for it, which was stapled to the test when we handed it in. And that day I bought a whole stack. Normally I didn't, I could squeeze in what I thought was adequate work showing on the test itself. She didn't get the hint though, but instead looked all smug that I was finally going to show all my work. And show my work I did. I wrote out every step, even really basic stuff like addition and subtraction, and if there were multiple things to add and subtract, I made sure each instance was a separate step. By the end I had filled 7 pages front and back, and the whole thing was so thick that the poor dollar store stapler that she had on her desk couldn't staple all the pages together in one shot. She did not look so smug after that. Also, just to make sure she had actually read my mathematics novel, I intentionally made an error in my work on one question, and since she didn't comment on where I made the mistake, because she didn't want to read all of that, I obviously had to stay after class to get some extra help. It did reduce my grade a bit to go that extra mile here, but getting a 95% instead of 100 was worth it. After a few rounds of this, she threw in the towel and rescinded her rule about showing work. Good times were had by all. TLDR. I was maliciously compliant. P.S. Since I don't want to sound like too much of an a-hole, I want to note that this teacher did not like me. I was definitely an above average student and I had a tendency to doodle or something instead of paying attention if I already had a solid grasp of the material. Most of my teachers didn't care since I was still learning and wasn't being disruptive, but this math teacher was an exception and was a constant pain in my ass about it. I had an opportunity to be a pain in the ass in return, so I took it. Can't have water at the register, expect longer waiting times. This is a story from when I was a little younger, so details may be foggy. I worked at a grocery store called Win dixie Yes, the very same one from the book. It's a well-known grocery store from the south. I was about 19 and I was a cashier. Usually the two types of people working the registers were extremely young or old. I was obviously young and because of that, management had their eyes on me from the beginning. In the eyes of corporate America, young workers tend to be irresponsible and are more seasonal workers than permanent ones. I, however, am the exception. Don't know if this happened to anyone else, but as a cashier, I was assessed for my scan time, how fast I can scan items, my percentage of error, having to remove items off of orders, my wait time, how long it takes to ring a customer up and cash them out, and customer satisfaction. Customers got to leave comments about the work stuff, either online or in store. I don't know if they still do those now, but these were my stats. I was the fastest, accurate, friendliest cashier in the store. We tend to have a bunch of regulars considering we were right in the middle of a retirement community and we were down the road from the local college. Now anyone who has worked as a cashier, you know you can't leave your register and if no one is in your line then you are to clean up the end caps, straighten up the candy, make everything look good. Most of us enjoy talking with customers and after so much talking you get thirsty. So we would keep drinks under our register, spill proof containers hidden from customers eyes. Cue the malicious compliance. So our manager, we will call her Kelly, was away on medical leave. So in her place we had one of the managers in training from the corporate office come and run the store in her absence. My stats are the best and I'm shining at my register. She introduced herself and we'll call her Corporate Witch. Within a week of being there she changes everything. First she messed up the schedule. While I was part time because of college she switched me to a full time schedule with overtime. I was working 12 hour shifts. I was on break so at first it was okay. I did advise her that I go to a community college and I have classes starting in a month or so. Well, can't you just take them online? I can some of my classes but not all. My sciences I have to be on site for labs and when I take my tests I have to be in the classroom. She scoffed at whatever and I thought that was it. Nope. She cut my hours to like 2 days a week, 6 hour shifts. I was pissed. I didn't say anything because I knew once Kelly got back everything would go back to normal. One day, I come into work straight off the city bus. I still have on my normal clothes with my uniform and my backpack. I run to the back and change in the bathrooms. I lock my stuff in my locker and take a swig of water from the water fountain before making my way to the front. I buy a bottle of water and tape my receipt around the bottle so they know I wasn't stealing. Clock in, get my till and make my way towards my register. Once I cut my light on, the line forms and I get all of my customers checked out in a decent amount of time. Once it's clear, I take my bottle and drink some water. Corporate witch walks up. What are you doing? Drinking water. You are not supposed to be drinking at your register. 
Me figuring maybe it was rude if the customer saw me drinking and not wanting to disobey a manager, I nod and say, yes ma'am, and put my bottle away. The next day it's busy, I knock out most of the rush and my line is empty for a moment. I take my bottle and run to the front door. I chill where the carts are and I take a swig of my water. I run back to my register and put the water back under it. Corporate witch sees me running back and walks over. What was that? I was thirsty, just drinking some water. I said you cannot drink at your register. I didn't, I ran to the door and drunk in the cart corral. You can't drink there either. Okay. The next day, I'm thirsty. I take my drink and I drink it near my friend's register. No customers at all. No one saw me, or so I thought. Corporate witch over the intercom. Commotion, please pick up the red line. Me picks up the phone. Hello? What are you doing? Taking a drink. I told you. You told me I can't drink at my register. I can't drink in the cart corral. Corporate witch says nothing and hangs up. 15 minutes, she is at the front with a write up in hand. Apparently, I was being insubordinate. I signed it even though I didn't agree. So if I'm thirsty, where can I get a drink? The water fountain in the back near the restrooms. Okay. I had the next two days off. I get a call from Kelly. She tells me the corporate witch called her and told her I received a write-up and how I'm rude and disrespectful. I tell Kelly what happens and she is furious. Mind you, I was already looking for another job because I wanted something closer to home. I had found one and I decided since corporate witch was there ruining my life, I was going to put in my two weeks. The very next workday was my last day. She scheduled me for a 12 hour shift on the most busy day of the month, the first. I come in ready. I start ringing customers up, luckily they are my regulars. I ask them to excuse me for a moment and walk to the back taking my time. Take a sip of water from the fountain and then make my way back. 20 minutes later, I do it again. 50 minutes later, I do it again. At this point I left my register with customers there at least two times an hour. This caused my line to back up and forced corporate witch to come and hop on the register. When I came back she starts, what are you doing? I was thirsty and I was told that I need to go to the back and drink from the fountain. Corporate witch is livid but does nothing because she was the one who gave me those directions. Once I clock out, I hand her my letter of resignation and my name tag. I wave and walk away. A week or so later, corporate calls and asks me why I resigned. I tell them everything. I find out that Kelly snitched when she read my letter of resignation. She was so insistent on corporate paying the store a visit and that they did. They asked my co-workers what was going on and they told them. I still shopped at that store from time to time and I found out that the cashiers were allowed to have drinks at the registers again. I also saw a corporate witch there. She followed me around and gave me the mean mug while I shopped. Apparently she was demoted to cashier. It felt so good to have her ring up my items and bag them for me. Have a great day. I will. Okay, so that's all for r slash malicious compliance. I really hope you did enjoy this one. As always, if you do want to see more content like this, then please do subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!